All right, everybody, it's been a while since we did a video. I just put one up of Marco and I implementing Bluefin DX, which is Bluefin Developer Edition. And that's what I want to talk about today. Uh, it's summer here, and a lot of us are relaxing, what we call chill ops, since we kind of finished uh, Fedora 38 a while ago, and mostly we are watching lights turn green and fixing docs, that, that kind of stuff. So since everything's mostly feature complete, um, it kind of gives us some time to work on other things that we like. And one of the things I've always wanted to do is make a version of my image that has more of the working tools and things that I need. So one of the patterns I think that people are missing out on is the ability to build off of others, because obviously we're just starting to create these tools. And while these patterns are very common in cloud, we're still not at the point where I'd like to see us be where we're consuming layers from each other and, and reusing work. So that's gonna come with maturity as more people start to use this stuff and better tooling is developed and things like that. So if you haven't tried in a while, you might wanna check out the Ublue OS starting point repo. Uh, but what I wanna talk about today is going to be how I kind of made uh, a use case based solution to a problem that I had. So uh, Bluefin for me is my desktop, right? Ublue is the kit that uh, it, it tries to remain mostly upstream, right? We add codecs and, and convenience features, and things like that. But we don't really want too strong opinions in there because we want to give people the option to have a nice base image that you can base off of and respect Fedora's choices, right? In a, in a lot of uh, cases, but give you the, hopefully what you need to get that experience that you want and then be able to use those as a building block for the thing that you want to build. So in this case, I call this Bluefin and it's, we keep it in the Ublue OS repo as kind of an example because if it was all vanilla stock images, uh, that, that would be boring, right? But if I showed you, here's how you can use the tool in order to make the thing that you want, it might encourage people to expand uh, their horizons when they're thinking about uh, this kind of stuff so that you're not just adding packages, but once you start to learn um, how to use this kind of stuff, you can, you can build totally different experiences that are nothing like uh, the original. So that's what I'm looking forward to seeing from people. One of the problems I was having though, is I had, I have a lot of computers. I'm a nerd. Um, so let's see, I have a gaming laptop. I have a gaming desktop. This is my work, uh, workstation. This is a Thelio, uh, from system 76. That's really nice. I have a ThinkPad, which is my old work laptop. I've always worked from home. So I never really throw away laptops. So I have about four or five old, old work laptops and they all run Linux and they all have some sort of thing on there. And that what, that's what ends up making like your home lab and all of these things I use. And I enjoy this model because since I have them all on the same image, I kind of have my, per everywhere I go is comfortable, right? If I'm, uh, if I'm on vacation and I read an article about a cool tool that I like, and I add it in Git by the time I get home, it's on all my machines. And that's, that's where I like to be. However, there's also a bunch of other stuff that I need uh, in order to get my job done easier, but I don't want to layer a bunch of stuff. Vert Manager, uh, Visual Studio Code, which is having some flat pack maintenance issues. If you want to help out there, that'd be amazing. And, uh, but I figured, you know, you are making a custom image. I do want to add libvert and LXC, LexD, th that kind of stuff. So at, at that point, you know you have to make an image because it's lower level stuff and that should be on an image. So since I have to make an image, I might as well make it perfect for that specific use case. However, what I don't want to do is make an entirely different image because now I have two problems. What I want is my cool, perfect desktop and that's what I put on my Chromebook-like replacement, my normal desktops, something that my kid might, or my family might use. And in the case of my two-in-one, it has a small drive. So I don't want all that other development stuff on there. Its job is to play YouTube, right? Uh, and the Bluefin image does that. But at the same time, I need all this stuff and layering is um, 
not a deal for me anymore, especially now that I have the power to do this kind of stuff. So we created last night, we created the Bluefin DX image, which you can rebase to. And the pattern here is just take an image you have, whack a DX at the end, and then you can put all your developer stuff on it. Uh, so there's Bluefin DX if you have an Intel or AMD machine, and Bluefin DX NVIDIA if you have an NVIDIA machine, and that will grab all the drivers and all the stuff that it's already done by somebody else. We're just going to reuse it for our purposes. And I, I just wanted to give you a quick overview of the tour since we did an hour-long video um, on the thing. Is What we did is, if you look in the container file and scroll down, this is the... Uh, this is the magic here, line 52 and down. What we're doing is basing off of the existing thing that we have. And then we're going to add our developer stuff that I want on that image. Visual Studio Code, Lex D, Lex C. A bunch of extra Podman stuff that you might not need on a normal desktop. Nerd fonts. So someone had the idea, hey, if this is supposed to be the developer edition, wouldn't it be great? If you just included some really great monospace fonts for developers, because I want those in VS Code. Cockpit I left, I have for a few reasons. I, I want them on this image so I can become familiarized with cockpit, because at some point I do want to figure out how to have a light cockpit setup on the normal images so that for people who want to manage all of these clients, wouldn't it be neat if you had on your developer workstation, uh, you know, you go in your browser and you get the cockpit web UI and all of the computers in your house are just in there and it gives you stats for hardware. You can SSH into each one. It's kind of a nice, like manage your own internal network style. And because we do bundle tail scale, they'll always be on the same network. And I, that's a solution that I'm thinking is, would work great for it mom and dad. Right, someone who's like, "Hey, I need to set up my dad uh, with a laptop, uh, but he's in Texas. How can I set it up so that if I ever need to do maintenance, I I can do that, right? Or maybe I'm on a work trip or something like that, and there's I always forget something, even though I'm a cloud guy, somewhere on my network, and because of Tailscale, I'm always on my home network. So, uh, wouldn't it be neat if we had a nice GUI web GUI?" interface for all my stuff. So that's, that's why I'm putting cockpit in there. Uh, very powerful tool, right? I always say we're, we're one or few, one or two, uh, cockpit plugins away from having a manage your own Chrome, Chrome OS style deployments, which is what I want. And then I, I started asking around getting some more power tools from people. And in this case, uh, I am a cloud native person. So I, I want the latest flux helm, Minio, I want to play with all these tools, so I added those. Um, and that actually comes as a separate image, and I rebase to it. So what's really great here is I have it all building out of the repo. And if I have a machine that wants to be a developer experience, I switch it over to this image. And if I have one that's just going to be a normal computer, I switch it back to stock Bluefin, uh, and then I'm good to go. What I really enjoy about this is when you go on holiday and you tell yourself, um, so it's common for people to tell you, you know, uninstall Slack from your phone when you go on vacation. Uh, the meme I'm going to use is, hey, it's time to go on holiday. Get off your DX images. <laughs> you know, so I still have a computer, but, you know, maybe I don't have all those tools there to, to help me with my work-life balance. So what's important for me here, I think, to, to share, to wrap this up, is the pattern, right? Like, even though I have a, my normal thing and I wanted a developer experience version, right? If you have your own custom image, that could be anything. I just happen to choose developer experience, right? If you want, if you have your perfect image and then maybe you want one for your kids that has a bunch of learning packages or, or, or whatever, and, and you want to derive from that. That's why we want to, I think, tease this pattern out a little bit more, you know, and you can have as many as you want, right? So if, if you have one, with your preferences, your spouse's preferences. Re reasonably speaking, I'm not expecting to make a lot of these, but the options are there. And I think that's what's important because we don't know what the other use cases are, right? Um, so I can imagine uh, like a lab environment. I, I, for those of you who don't know, I come from a uh, background in working at 
Unix workstations at a university, right? And I can imagine you having a base image there, but then different images that build off of that for the mathematics department, for the computer science department, and those apps are different, but you want that common base that you can manage there and then have everything just nice and cascaded down when they're getting your builds. So that's the developer experience uh, addition. It's, it's a bit of a bigger image, but um, one thing I would like to say, those of you that always have, you always see people, the images are too big, da, da, da. And that is something that we do say in cloud, you know, it annoys us too. We always want to get images to be smaller. However, also think about is if you had the bandwidth and the resources on your machines, right? If you had a traditional Linux distro and I needed all these packages, right? At the end of the day, when you start to install apps, it's, they're about the same size, right? So, um, for me, it's one of those things where it's like, would I ideally love to have a well-maintained VS Code flat pack with that clean separation, dev containers, and all of that kind of stuff? Absolutely, yeah, that, that would be amazing. Can I ship that out of the box right now? Not really. So what can we do? We could just shove it on the image and let people get to work. One of the nice benefits of this model, remember, it's building these every single evening. Right. So if at some point we remove something or we want to add something, we don't have to go back and clean up. Um, you know, there's no step in your package manager to clean up the old things to put you through a transition. Right. So we can very quickly be agile when it comes to adding and removing packages. Right. For something like the developer edition, I expect over the next few months that we'll just be occasionally adding packages, removing stuff, kind of making generalize as much as possible. And then at some point it'll just be finished and you know, it'll, it'll be mostly good to go as a base image. And that will be something else that maybe someone else might derive from to get them. Okay. I want this, but maybe a bunch of ML tool, ML AI tools on top, or maybe you work in a totally separate industry, but you need that development stuff, but maybe you want to add a bunch of other tooling internally or externally. It doesn't matter because it's all derived from Docker containers. So that's it. I'm probably not going to have a lot of videos here moving forward. Now that we have the YouTubers kind of looking at the stuff, they do a way better job explaining this. Um, that's not a, you know, obviously we're still committed to the project and doing it, uh, but you know, it is summer and it's nice to, to log in, see everything's green and then go on and, and do something else, even though we always have things to improve. So, uh, now we really are just kind of chilling, taking care of ourselves, figuring out a cadence, uh, while, while we wait for, uh, fedoras, uh, to land the features and, and we integrate those. Uh, so yeah, have a great time. We hope you're enjoying uh, all the stuff that you're playing with. And if you haven't played with it yet, uh, please check it out with that. Have a great one, y'all.